continue on and actually finish up the learn accessibility by building a quiz on FreeCodeCamp. And so we're on step 60 here. So it is useful to see the de default border around the field set elements um, during development. However, you might it might not be the style you want. Um, remove the border and bottom padding on the question elements. So let's target these. So dot question and we'll set border to none and uh, padding dash bottom to zero. And there we go. You can see that was was jumping up there. Um, if I just comment that out, we can see we've got the field set um, sort of border around that and it doesn't always look so great. So let's do that and let's check this. Cool. So step 61, remove the default styling for the list items of answers list and remove the unordered list padding. So these are the list items, the LIs. Um, and so that would be, uh, I think it will be, um, is it list dash style? I think that's the property, none. There we go. And you can see we got rid of the dots there. Um, and remove the unordered list padding. So answers list is what here? <clears throat> Dash list is, oops, where's that gone? Here, answers list, sorry. Seems to have lost it. There, we are. answers list is the UL, so that's cool. We don't need the HTML there. So what we can just do is remove the padding. So we can do padding equal to zero, like so. And you see that that jumps over there. Perfect. And just get rid of that selection there. So step sixty-two: give the submit button a free code camp style design with the following CSS properties. So as you can see, we currently have that on the send. Um, so what do we want to do? We want to target the button. Um, so what I'm going to do is just target um, button like so, and we'll just see if we need to give it a proper class. But there you go. You can see the button now looks like a free code camp button, which is nice. So let's check that. Perfect. Then step 63, uh, let's do ask me later. Set the footer background color. So let's do footer and background dash color. Um, it's going to be this hex code. Oops, let's grab that. Like so, <clears throat> and pop that in. And we should be able to see there the footer color has changed. And then we want to use flex box. So display flex and horizontally center the text. So um, that would be justify content. Oh, sorry, it will be flex direction um, column. <coughs> oh, apologies. Um, let's just see if that passes. <coughs> um, sorry about that. No, it is, it is justify content um, center and we can see now it's centered horizontally um, over there. Yeah, let's try that again. There we go. So step 64, now we cannot read the text. So target the footer and the anchor element within. So use that um, syntax and set the font dash color. Um, sorry, it's actually just color for font. Um, of an adequate contrast ratio. So I think we can just set that to white, which would just be zero, zero, zero. Oh no, it would be one, 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 I think. Um, was it FFF, three Fs, there we go, that's white. Um, and now if we zoom over, the anchor tag is not white. Um, let's just check this. <clears throat> Ah, so we need to do footer and then footer a like so and so that passes now and just to confirm the text here in the footer is now white and it's a good contrast between the darker background color that we gave to the footer itself 
So step 65, horizontally center all of the text within the address element. So let's target that. Um, and so we can do that with display flex and justify content center. And then we want to give it some padding. So let's just do 10 pixels like so. And let's see the address. There we go. And interestingly, I'm not sure how that looks. Um, and actually, maybe we want to instead give that text a line center rather than have it as a flex box. Um, so let's do that. There we go. So there you go. You can see it's all centered now um, along that axis. So step 66, click, clicking on the navigation links to jump to the viewport of the relevant section. However, this jumping can be disorientating for some users. So for example, that's a quite a quick transition. So we can select all elements. Um, so I'm gonna do that with the global selector here, the star, and we'll do scroll dash behavior um, to smooth. And now if I click up and down, you can see it's more smoothly transitioning between those elements rather than just jumping to them. Um, and it's quite a nice effect as well. So generally I'd recommend if you've got any links within the page um, to set that scroll behavior to smooth um, and it kind of, yeah, is a bit nicer. Cool. So now a good point to this as well is that on step 67, certain types of motion based animations can cause discomfort for some users. Um, in particular, people with vestibular uh, disorders have sensitivity to certain motion triggers. So there is a, a media rule um, similar to sort of screen size, for example, but this one is called prefers reduced motion and that sets the CSS based on the user's preferences, which can be reduce or no preference. So if they want to reduce motion, um, that, that, that can be, I guess, achieved by putting those selectors and those styles within there. So here's the syntax of how it works. So we just want to wrap that rule um, like so in a media, so at media, um, <coughs> And the feature is prefers, oops, prefers uh, dash reduced dash motion. And, and actually we want to put the selector in there as well, like so. So if I can just move everything over. So we've got our media query, prefers reduced motion and and here we've got our selector and then the styles itself. Let's just see if that is passing. I'm not getting syntax highlighting, so um, not sure if that will pass. Yep, it didn't. Oops. Ah, so this is the feature. And then if there's no preference, no dash preference, that's the value that we want to provide and it will scroll behavior smooth. So if there, is a preference in the sense that they want to reduce that, um, this rule won't apply basically. So I think this is final now. So step 68, finally, the navigation accessibility can be improved by providing keyboard shortcuts. The access key attribute accepts a space separated list of accessed keys. For example, here there's a button type submit, access key is S for submit. So give each of the navigation links a single letter access key. Um, so let's give it here. What I'm gonna do is holding the option and clicking, I've selected all of these elements here. Um, so we can do access key. And what I'm gonna do is do that for now. And then we'll just do actually, just make it simple we'll do a b and c and i think the access key can be on the anchor tag here but if not it will need to be on the li but yeah that's fine so we can see now if i press c do we go down to css no um okay not sure exactly how that works then um 
it's not always advised to use access keys but they can be useful so anyway something to bear in mind and I'm gonna have a look at this now um, sort of on the MDM docs and just find a bit more information but anyway that passes that and if I submit we should have completed that section so yeah that was um, learn accessibility by building a quiz on free code camp part of the re new responsive web design um, you can see here we're now on build a tribute page which I'm not going to do because I've done these projects before when I was first going through free code camp back in sort of 2020 um, and 2021 but yeah good luck with it all and I look forward to seeing you in the next video thanks for watching